Tropical Storm Roslyn, a hurricane threat for the coast of Mexico. And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. October 21st. Right now, this is what we have presented on the screen. Roslyn in the Eastern Pacific. Tropical Depression 25W, a questionable status, to be fair, in the Western Pacific. And still the remnants of Nisat, still traceable near the coast of Vietnam. 79 storms have formed so far this year. In the Atlantic, it's still very calm and quiet on day 143 of hurricane season and nothing in the forecast for the next five days. So that's certainly a good sign and possibly signs that the season is really wrapping up now. In the Eastern Pacific, of course, Roslyn is the main threat right now and a tropical storm watch is in effect for the coast of Mexico. This could become a substantial hurricane, likely to peak as a Category 2 at the moment, according to the National Hurricane Center forecast, before weakening as it reaches the coast of Mexico near Jalisco. And in the Western Pacific, 25W, its position getting pretty close to the Batanas Islands of the Philippines, ex nasat and that moderate chance now to the east there, that could pass just south of the Mariana Islands 40%. Some indications could be a little bit higher than that. Potential formation next week. And this area of interest in the Indian Ocean is still not quite there yet. 70% chance now and landfall is only three to four days away whenever it occurs, wherever it occurs. Uh, so we'll have to see. It's an uncertain situation whether that system will form. Latest satellite imagery takes us to the Atlantic and you can see two uh, major uh, frontal systems there or troughs and some more uh, disturbances off towards the far northeast but really nothing of a tropical nature and a lot of dry air uh, dominating there. Looking to the eastern Pacific you can easily see uh, Roslyn there, the main feature of the entire basin really few other disturbances moving out further over the water uh, but generally uh, it is looking rather calm apart from Roslyn with dry air uh, quite prominent particularly in near the equatorial zone. Here's some visible imagery of what Roslyn was looking like this afternoon into the evening hours. We've just about reached sunset at the time of recording and you can see quite clearly the center underneath that storm convection. Um, decent amounts of convection blowing up near the center although the southern side is still lacking a little bit. I do wonder where that might be the impact of shear it looks like as we switch over to the infrared uh, view. Uh, but the storm looking pretty decent there and some estimates uh, by our team suggesting now that it may be getting towards 50 miles per hour. National Hurricane Center running with 45 at their latest update and I imagine we'll have more updates on the Force 13 channel throughout the next 24 hours and beyond. Here's some more infrared imagery there. Um, the more opaque view uh, showing that this storm structure is quite decent and it's getting itself together. Uh, just needs to build up that convection a little bit more on the southern side. Of course wind shear is probably going to be a big determining factor as to whether this storm will boom or bust. But at the moment it is only uh, a weak to moderate tropical storm but we can never underestimate how quickly systems can develop in this particular region, particularly late season. We've seen it so many times before. Here's the Western Pacific right now then and you can see that Tropical Depression 25W is still blowing up convection but earlier ASCAP passes indicated that the uh, circulation had completely dissolved. So right now it looks like a trough system really uh, but we'll have to wait and see what happens with that whether it gets itself together again. To the southeast there you could see more disturbances that could develop into that future tropical cyclone. In the Indian Oceans things are still looking fairly quiet when you look at the Andaman Sea. There's not a huge amount of convection blowing up there and it's still very monsoonal in nature. There's very little rotation going on so it's going to be something that uh, goes on for quite some time, a slow burner, and we'll see how the models resolve it shortly. And this is the Australian region. You can see a lot of uh, showers there along the east coast that Mainly it started to die off there in the morning hours, uh, but still uh, a lot of rain issues in that part of the world. 
Sea surface temperatures then, where Roslyn is right now, it's just uh, just the ticket for it, around 30 degrees Celsius underneath that tropical storm. In the Atlantic, the Gulf of Mexico is starting to fragment a little bit more, temperatures starting to cool. The Caribbean still remains very warm, 30 degrees plus, and that's what you would expect well into the late season, and that's really the prime area you'll be looking at for development as we enter these last two months. Um, but elsewhere in the Atlantic, it's starting to cool down, there's still uh, quite a few areas of warm Warmth, so always be on the lookout. North Indian Ocean, you can see here, still expanding that 30 degree isotherm along the coast of India and on Bangladesh and Myanmar, uh, but certainly sea surface temperatures won't be an issue there. Philippine Sea looking decently warm as well, 28 degrees generally, a few cool little patches there, but it's still looking decent, one or two 30 degree spots as well. Where that depression is right now, uh, dropping a little bit just below 28 degrees Celsius, so it will struggle a little bit over the next day or two. Uh, to be honest, sea surface temperatures probably aren't going to be its main struggle it's going to be other factors is the sea surface temperature anomalies the la nina still uh, quite powerful there those uh, cold anomalies have uh, decreased slightly um, and elsewhere eastern pacific is hit and miss it's uh, a warm patch though for roslyn and in the atlantic it is still mostly above average apart from one or two spots in the gulf Oceanic heat content is still sky high for the Western Caribbean Sea and on the eastern side of Jamaica towards Haiti as well. So late season storms in that area will still find joy. And in the eastern Pacific there, only one or two little areas. And Roslyn has already passed some of those. And in the western Pacific, we're still looking at that fair decent area there of uh, very warm oceanic heat content. So the GFS develops this out of Roslyn now and it uh, fancies its chances of becoming a substantial hurricane, at least category 2 there, possibly high end, and starts to weaken just as it reaches the coast there near Preda Vallata, and it also reminds us I suppose a little bit of Orlean. It's going to be a larger storm than Orlean though, um, only a little bit larger, uh, but you can see it there weakening quite substantially by the time it reaches the coast, and it's a little bit of a deja vu there to be honest. Um, and as it weakens as it moves inland. We'll wait and see just how that happens. Western Pacific, you can see that depression moving through into the South China Sea, becomes a tropical storm for a little bit, and then off it goes towards the southwest again. And then this typhoon coming in behind it, the one that we've been monitoring, uh, currently at 40%, there it is, becoming a category one in that, uh, towards the end of that five day period. Its motion is still very, um, unconfident this is just a gfs scenario other models are saying things that are radically different in fact the ecmwf already has it through the philippines as a weak tropical storm by day five the indian ocean are throwing out that tropical storm eventually and there it is actually now quite a small system in relative or massive contrast to what it was showing just yesterday uh, so just shows goes to show how quickly these things can change uh, but the reason why that's happened is because it looks like it's detached from the broader low pressure system which was also trying to form another tropical cyclone and it shoots northwards there right to the Ganges River Delta probably as a category one but once again this is very uncertain and this forecast keeps flip-flopping around as well but check out the uh, rain rates and uh, rainfall totals I should say on this graphic for that area that will be affected by this storm and this is a lot more of a sure thing than the actual storm uh, strength and where exactly it will hit uh, but certainly we're looking at potential for maximums of 10 inches of rain there that's 250 millimeters and whatever happens when that storm will eventually shoot off towards the northeast inland over the interior parts of India and uh, Pakistan, not Pakistan, Bangladesh and Myanmar uh, delivering quite a substantial amount of rain there as well but wherever it hits along the coast will be the worst affected possibly pushing 10 inches also Myanmar there, the southern part as well, uh, getting quite a bit of rain too. Longer range then, GFS does uh, quite a number with this typhoon becoming a large and very powerful storm there. This is day 5 through day 10, powerful category 4 there, peaking at 923 millibars, so probably a high end category 4 at that. And off it goes, really headed towards Taiwan there in that 5 day period day 5 to 10 but once again as I said the ECMWF takes it through the Philippines as a weak storm so it's a dramatic difference from what uh, those two models are saying right now. 
At this point you can scan the barcode and take a look at the Force 13 merch store. We have all of our usual items, full season and individual storm animations available for request and are still waiting for Hone A t-shirt because we are indeed still waiting. Into the silly range then, and this is uh, labelled as such for a reason, anything that you see here is most likely not going to happen. So day 10 through to day 16, showing what the Atlantic is holding on to, the potential for another tropical storm there in the mid-latitudes. Um, and also, I think I may have spotted a sneaky little tropical storm in the southwest Caribbean. Just look on the left hand side of your screen. There's a little rotation there. Looks like that might be, yep, a brief tropical storm for southern Nicaragua there in the early days of November as well. So potentially two storms in the long range on the GFS, but it's an extremely long range. What happens to that typhoon? Well, it doesn't actually make landfall in Taiwan and it recurves and shoots off towards the east. Uh, usually at this time of year, storms really dip to the south of Japan, being pushed away very quickly and very far to the east rather than taking a more northerly course. So you can't really fault that track forecast, but just that it's extremely far out in terms of uh, time. Um, it's a very uncertain um, prediction and as I mentioned other models saying things that are vastly different something we've got to watch for wherever you are in, in Eastern Asia though it's probably going to hit somewhere well then what happened on this day it was October 21st 2017 when we had a category 5 typhoon LAN extremely impressive storm and it was racing off to the northeast probably one of the strongest storms I've seen moving off at such a speed when it was um, which started pretty much on the 21st. Sayola was just behind it as well, getting its name, uh, getting its name to the east of uh, Guam. And so that's what was active on this day five years ago. Uh, feels like there should be more on that screen, but it really was just those two storms on this day. Back to this year and next up on the Atlantic naming list is still Lisa. In the Eastern Pacific now, the next name is Seymour. And in the Central Pacific, we're looking out for Hone. 79 storms have formed so far this year. Will we get to 92? I think we probably will. There's still plenty of time before the end of the year. In the Western Pacific, next up is Nalgi. In the North Indian Ocean, Citrang, ever elusive. We still have uh, come no closer to getting that storm named uh, as we were probably five or 10 days ago when we were first looking at it. And in the Southern Hemisphere, Darien is next in the Australian region, Chiniso in the Southwest Indian, and Harley in the South Pacific. We'll be back again with another tropical weather bulletin tomorrow night.